overkill sure can be fun sometimes. When I play video games, I love taking the flamethrower to the anthill, so to speak. Like in Fallout, they have these little awful cockroach things that you could really just take out by punching them, but I like to get out the plasma gun and vaporize those little things until it... Sorry. Guess I got a little carried away there. Let's leave that discussion for another day, shall we? <laughs> so engineering is all about balance and compromise. We want to select the right tool for the job and use techniques that are appropriate for solving the problem at hand. We do not want to use overkill. But what about using an emulator for software development? Is that overkill? Do we really need a big, expensive emulator box just for running a few lines of code? Is that like a flamethrower on an anthill by chance? <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. I am speaking with Lauro Rosati of Eve, who says that emulators are most certainly not overkill for software development. We are going to talk about the latest in emulation technology and explain how you can use emulation to dramatically accelerate software development, which is becoming the most time-consuming part of SOC design. Before we get started, I want to remind everyone that you can click on that Download Now button below your player. There you can download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. Welcome, Laro. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Amelia. I'm glad to be here with you. Thank you. In today's SOC embedded design process, there are a lot of factors that make the verification task increasingly difficult. Can you highlight for us what we can see as the major trends and challenges in verifying complex SOCs? Certainly, Amelia. There are two major trends that I highlight on the right with a chart. The chart is uh, mapping the cost of designing an embedded SOC that includes hardware and embedded software in function of the node technology. And the slide clearly indicates that there is an inflection point between 45 and 32 nanometers where the cost is steeply rising and getting out of control in a sense. Of course, this, the slide is just mapping cost, but you can easily replace that with complexity. So we can say that below 45 nanometers, the complexity of designs are escalating. And this, of course, is posing major challenges in the design flow. So how do we cope with this growing complexity? Well, over time, the industry developed uh, three major classes of verification tools. Simulators, uh -huh. here highlighted on the left of the slide. I'm talking here about RTL or gate level simulators. Okay. At the opposite stream will be the prototyping, let's say FPGA prototyping. And in the middle sits emulators, which is essentially what EVE is specialized in. And here we have some uh, metrics that show the differences between the three approaches. Performance, design uh, size and scalability and debugging capabilities. The simulator is excellent, but unfortunately, the performance drops significantly with the increase of the design complexity. And therefore, for software development, they are absolutely inadequate. The prototyping is a bit the opposite in the sense that performance is excellent, very, very high, but uh, debugging capabilities are very, very low. And the emulation system sits in the middle, is that in essentially filling the gap between the other two technologies. So, Lauro, before we dive into the details about emulation, some of our audience may not know about EVE. Tell us a little bit about your company. EVE was incorporated in the year 2000 by four founders. And if you fast forward to 2012, today we have 100 plus employees on a worldwide basis. Wow, okay. The majority of them are employed in the R&D department. Essentially, they are designing our emulators. And I'd like to say that the majority of those 60% are software developers in the ratio of 9 to 1 between software and hardware. Wow. We have 500 plus machines installed at 60 plus customer sites for a total of more than 20 billion gate capacity. And I'd like also to mention that in the rolling 12 months 
the company achieved over $50 million of revenues with 60 plus millions in bookings. And we are quite profitable. So you guys do emulation. Let's get into the details. Tell us about your emulators. Today we have two machines, the Zebu server, which is essentially an enterprise type of emulator, and the Zebu Blade 2, which is more a desktop emulator. The former will give you maximum scalability, capacity exceeding 1 billion gates, actually 1.5 billion gates, is a multi-user machine, and is ideal for any type of design, especially big designs. The Zebu Blade 2 is instead a single slot machine, which means single user, with a maximum capacity of 32 million IC gates, and the speed exceeding all the tens of megahertz. Both of them, which is a characteristic of our machines, offer the lowest cost of ownership in the industry. Today, a verification engineer has a lot of tools in their toolbox. Tell us how emulation fits in with the other technologies used for SOC verification. In the previous slide, I highlighted the three major classes of verification tools using three metrics. Let me now use a more visual slide where I map on a chart using speed of execution and design capacity. The simulator sits on the bottom left corner, reaching probably 100 million gates and maybe a kilohertz or a few kilohertz of speed. The traditional emulator, we sometimes call them big box emulator because actually they are big, have higher capacity and higher performance, maybe a megahertz top. Okay. The FPGA prototyping goes all the way to possibly 100 megahertz, typically will be 2030. Our fast Zebu emulators sits in between the big box emulator and the FPGA prototyping. So a lot of people assume that emulation is just for debugging hardware. Emulators are expensive machines, but Zebu plays a big role in both hardware and software development and debug, correct? That is correct. And one way that we elected to experiment with success, indeed now is part of our packaging and offerings, is to differentiate the emulator in two different packages. What we call HDP, stands for Hardware Development Platform, that is providing the entire suite of capabilities, including debugging, hardware debugging, at full price. And then repackage that without hardware debugging capabilities, so targeting software development, and calling that SDP for software development platform at 50% the price of the HDP. And typically we bundle them with one HDP and two to four SDPs. And this is very successful on the marketplace. So at the beginning, we were going to talk about ARM-based designs. Tell us a little bit about how Zebu fits into this picture doing ARM-based designs. The typical design flow today starts at the ESL level. And if you have an ARM core or multiple ARM cores, actually today, multi-core are very popular, the design will use the ARM fast models for modeling the core. At one point in the design process, you start to have RTL blocks. They could be legacy blocks. They could be IP purchased or outside the company or from different sources within the company or could be the synthesized blocks of your ESL design. The moment you plug an RTL block into an ESL virtual environment, the performance takes a big hit. There is where an emulation system that is running fast and is supporting transaction interfaces plays a major role to avoid the drop in performance. That's what we do with Zebu. And here I give you an example where we have an RTL subsystem mapped inside Zebu and a couple of transactors, they are AXI master and slave, connected to the ESL fast uh, models of ARM. And the whole assembly, the whole uh, system is running at possibly megahertz speed, which is typically what we see, and avoiding the major degradation in speed. So what if our whole design is at the RTL level? Well, I would even say that would be an ideal situation because then the entire design can be mapped inside the emulator. 
ah, including okay. the ARM core. Then all what you have outside will be the software debugger that typically will connect to the ARM core via a vStream transactor and possibly other either destination or sources. In my example, I have an HDMI window and then a terminal window. They make up the ESL virtual platform. And the whole design now is running it definitely at multiple megahertz. In this following slide, I have an example where I have an one ARM Cortex connected to an ARM vStream, as I was mentioning before, to a vStream server sitting on the host PC connected to the emulator. And remotely, a client, vStream client PC could be either on a different side, could be in a different uh, territory, different region of the world. And the software developer people sitting there, maybe in India, with the emulator sitting in the Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. and performing the software validation task. So I heard you had a big success with a customer we can't name. Uh, that's an unfortunate story. I would like, I would love to tell you who the customer was. Maybe you understand if I describe a little bit the success story. The customer was developing a platform that is running Android and okay. will go into mobile devices. <laughs> so I let you draw a conclusion here who they might be. The good thing is that they adopted Zebu and they deployed Zebu to test the operating system Android ahead of Silicon. Okay. By the time the first engineering samples came and were made available within the development team, Android was up and running in two weeks. Wow. In fact, they demonstrated their platform at CES in Las Vegas in January of 2012. And just as a data point, they were also using a competitive emulator. And they told us that Android booted on Zebu in seven minutes, but it took three hours and 45 minutes in the competitive emulator. Wow. Now, the ratio between the two is 30 to 1, which essentially means that they were booting Android on the competitors twice a day. And they did that in Zebu in 30 times a day, or whatever the number is. Uh, the customer was very pleased, and we have to remain at that, stay at that. <laughs> okay. So to conclude, we have a platform that can address the design trends in complexity, both in hardware and in embedded software. And it's an ideal platform for ARM-based designs, starting from the ESL level all the way to a design that is entirely modeled at the RTL level. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Laro. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you, Amelia. The pleasure was mine. And before we go, don't forget to click that Download Now button below the player to download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. For Chalk Talk, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the On Demand section of eejournal.com.